Hi, my name is Gregory Nevin. This is joint work with Manu Dreyfus, Sergei Gorbanov, and Hotek Hui. I'll talk to you about Pixel. Pixel is a forward secure multi-signature scheme with applications to consensus protocols. So the main application, you guessed it right, blockchain. In case you've been living on a rock for the past 10 years and don't know what blockchain is, it's essentially a sequence of blocks, usually containing transactions, that gets agreed upon by a network of nodes. These nodes engage in a consensus protocol to agree on that sequence of blocks. There's different variants of consensus protocols, some of the most famous ones involving proof of work, where nodes have to solve hash puzzles in order to, um, to cast votes on blocks. Some of the more environmentally friendly solutions use proof of, proof of stake, where nodes vote on block proposals by, um, by depositing stake, by depositing tokens and for this vote and blocking them. Algorand, Cardano, Ethereum, Casper are some examples in this class. Or permission blockchains, where the membership of the network is, um, is, is closed and decided upon by the current members of the network. And they also usually vote on block proposals by an access structure imposed by the structure of the permission network. Ripple and Hyperledger Fabric are some um, examples in this class. Now, when I say that nodes in these systems vote on a block proposal, they usually do so by signing. And so these could be thousands of nodes that in each round are adding their own signature to this, to this blockchain. Plenty of those signatures have to be kept as part of the blockchain so it can be externally verifiable. So that's a whole lot of signatures flying around. And this is where multi-signatures come in. Multi-signatures are a primitive that allow you to, instead of having this list of multiple signatures by multiple signers on the same message, in this case the block, replacing it with a single signature, a single multi-signature that is short, about the same size as a single signature, and efficiently verifiable in about the same time as a single signature. So this is a huge gain that you can get, and therefore multi-signatures are quite popular for the use in blockchain. There's a long list of literature on, um, on multi-signatures. Not going to go over that here, but I guess we are adding our paper to that list. But for the forward secure aspect, I have to talk to you about another problem of blockchains. Um, posterior corruption, sometimes also known as long range attacks or cost of simulation. The problem essentially comes down to the assumption of chain integrity. Why do we think, do we believe that there can be no forks in the chain? Usually we assume that if less than a fraction of nodes or a fraction of the stake is corrupt, then we can prove that no two versions of the blockchain can exist. Now, suppose that we're working with a threshold of one third of the nodes. We have a network of 10 nodes here. Two nodes should be fine. No forks can, agree, can occur. But in case it would be four nodes out of 10 that are corrupt, forks can actually start uh, occurring. And this is what we want to avoid. Now, um, of course, when you corrupt the node signing keys, you essentially corrupted the node. So this is really a discussion about the signing keys of the node. Now, the problem is that the network is not static, usually. And so even if the current status of the network should be able to support, to cope with two corrupted nodes, those two corrupted nodes may have been around in the network for a lot longer, and their signature keys as well. And so when, when you corrupt those nodes and get their signature keys, you can actually go back in time in the blockchain and create a fork at the point where those two nodes were actually a fork in majority on the network and create a fork from there. So now you have two versions of history that are impossible to distinguish for an external verifier. This is exactly what we wanted to avoid. Note also that this problem only gets bigger over time. As the network evolves, there are only more and more sets of keys that become an Achilles heel to the, to the blockchain. So the, the real assumption is that if there's any corrupted nodes, that none of them formed a, a forking majority, so to speak, at any point in the past. This actually is a problem because also it may occur long after the nodes left and sold their stake, have no more interest in the network at all. They may even have sold their keys to, to the highest bidder. And it's even on top of that aggravated 
by consensus protocols that use committee signing for efficiency, where a smaller committee signs in name of the bigger group. With adaptive attacks, you could actually focus after the committees become known um, to focus only on those nodes who are part of the committee, get their keys, and create a fork at that point. So this is a big problem for, um, for blockchains. What is the solution? Obviously, rotating the keys. If you do that in a straightforward way, the public keys will change all the time of nodes, which is a bit impractical. So forward secure signatures are the way to go. Here the public key stays constant, but the secret key gets updated all the time. And you sign and verify with respect to a certain time frame. And the security property of forward secure signatures is that if your key gets corrupted now, the time frames of the past will be fine. You cannot forge signatures for the past. And that's why Pixel, the scheme that we present, is a forward secure multi-signature scheme. It is based on bilinear maps. Um, there's the public key, which is a uh, typical uh, generator raised to a secret exponent. The secret keys follow the structure of a hierarchical identity-based encryption scheme. Uh, the technique was first done by Kalevi Hatz, uh, Kanedi Halevi Katz, 2003. And our scheme can actually be seen as being underlain by the key structure of the bonnet boyan go uh, scheme of 2005. I'm not going to go into the details of the key structure here, but um, the scheme also has some public parameters, random group elements from G1, which can be determined by a hash function. And um, there is something you could see as a hash function, a hash function that takes the time frame and a message and converts it into a combination, a product of those H values, uh, depending on, on the message and the, the uh, binary representation of the time frame. Now, anyway, the way that its signature in time T looks like is this param public parameter h raised to the master key x times this hash of the time frame of message raised to a random exponent r. And a second component has this uh, exponent r in g2 to the r in there. You can verify such a single uh, verification by uh, evaluating these three pairings. And of course, the crucial part is can we compress those? And uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can compress those. Suppose you have a whole bunch of those signatures. Aggregating them into a single compact signature is as simple as just taking the product of component-wise of, uh, of the signatures. And you can check the algebra works out that you can verify this with respect to the aggregated public key, which is the product of all the individual public keys. Now, we prove that uh, this scheme is secure in the random oracle model, assuming secure erasures, obviously, because you have to update keys, and the hardness of um, a bilinear Diffie-Hellman assumption. Performance is pretty good um, on a BLS 12 3 at one curve with 1500 signers and about 4 billion uh, time periods. Signatures and keys remain small, public key 48 bytes, the signature 144 bytes independent of the number of signers in it, and are fast. Signing is fast, just 3 milliseconds. Computing the aggregate for 1500 signers is fast, just 7 milliseconds. Verifying that aggregate is also very fast, less than seven milliseconds. So all these operations are really just think of them as a single signature. Um, there's also a trade-off you can do uh, between the key and the signature sizes uh, versus the computation by switching the groups around. One of the groups is slightly slower and slightly bigger than the other one, but you can actually switch elements around and, uh, and the scheme will still work. Um, no trusted setup is needed for the pixel scheme which is a big advantage because trust is hard to come by in blockchain scenarios. And we also provide row key protection um, by proofs of possession. There's also other mechanisms uh, that are possible. Anyway, to show that this scheme actually works, we integrated in, it into the Algorand blockchain. Algorand uses uh, ED25519 signatures uh, by design and needs forward security for their uh, committee signing approach to work out. And they use the uh, Bellari Minor uh, generic approach with a tree-based structure of forward secure signatures. Those signatures take a lot of space and a lot of time to verify. We replaced that with our pixel scheme and obtained about 33% savings as well as in size and in block verification time. The detailed numbers are below. You see on the left the block verification time. Um, you see here for 1500 transactions per block with the uh, Bellari Miner ED25419 um, approach. These 
uh, this block verification time here is all spent on verifying those signatures and you see that that whole block essentially vanishes because it, it gets replaced by a single signature verification. So that's what for the verification time. Uh, blockchain size also gets improved quite a lot. In the blue here, you have the, uh, the original approach with Valari Miner ED25519 forward secure signatures. Um, on the right here in brown, you get with pixel, so we get even 40% savings in signature sizes. Um, it all depends on how many nodes are signing and how many, um, how many transactions are part um, of the block. But so, yeah, it, uh, it works and gets the savings that we wanted to get from it. I'll keep it at that for now. Um, I'm very much looking forward to your questions. Thank you.